Hi, I'm artist Andrea Kirk with the channel The Art Chick. Today we will be completing part two of my winter landscape painting project. I have provided my reference photo for your convenience. A full list of supplies can be found in the video description. Before I finish all of this area and all the abstract of the mountain, while we have this area that isn't wet, I'm going to show you how to go through and add some details to the mountain. We need to show that there's trees and texture, and so we don't want these harsh ridges everywhere. We're going to take this fine tip paintbrush, and this is one of my oldest brushes, and it has worn off, so I don't even know the size or the brand, but basically it's just a, a round um, fine tip brush, and this is perfect for what we're about to do. Another brush I like is this size 2 AIT Art Russian Sable brush, and this has a finer tip than the other one that I showed you, and this is really good for the fine details, like the teeny tiny trees, so you'll need both. So the first step to detailing is to make sure that you soften the edges. So I just put a little bit of blue on my paintbrush, a lighter blue, and I'm going to go along the edge here and soften and fade that edge so that it doesn't have a harsh line. And along with that, you can take that same blue and go in and just stipple some trees in there. And don't get carried away you don't want to do too many and you don't want it to be too bright. It just needs to be nice and subtle. You can even brush back and forth really fast on those edges and that will also give it a nice smooth faded edge. And then up here there is some snow. Well, obviously there's snow everywhere, but you want to show the snow in the trees and so again just take a light blue and go in and basically stipple this area with that color and that's why it's important that you do the dark first and then stipple on top because then it's really easy to apply that lighter color over the dried dark surface see the difference and then take a medium blue and you want to go along the edge here. You're going to soften it. You can take some darker paint, so I would say a dark gray, and just add some pine trees kind of poking up like this. Okay, and if it gets too dark up at the top, just take your paintbrush and fade it back in. And see the snow in between those trees. So just continue down along here doing that technique. And I'm not going to sit and show you how to do the entire process slow like this. I'm just showing you a few areas and then I will put it on time lapse and then you will proceed with doing it on your own time, but at least you'll know how to do it. And then also come down in here and make sure you add texture in that area so that it doesn't look plain. It's really good to build color and texture when working on landscapes. Okay, and then over in here, same thing, you want to add some dimension and texture. Now, if you want an area to look rocky or like there's a little ridge of snow, then you would do more like a line like that. So there's trees, there's ridges. But again, it just helps so much so that it doesn't look fake. You don't want the mountain to look like it's not real. So that's why we go over and do all this detail. It does take time though. Nothing that's going to turn out absolutely amazing is going to be really fast. 
You have to put the time into it. You have to be patient. That's the number one thing. If you want to be an oil painter, don't rush the process. If you are a quick artist and you want things done really, really fast, I would suggest using acrylics with your projects. But oil painting is a very slow and patient process. Okay, in here you can add some trees. So just go in and this time you're adding dark. Okay, we have those purples in there and you want to add some texture over those lighter shades. So you can go in and do the same thing but just darker. So you're stippling. You can even come up in here and add a few. Another trick you can do is you can take purple. So if you want more color, you can take some of this light purple. You can add that too in some of the areas. This area we need to darken. Don't get too dark. You can start out dark like that and then take a lighter blue and fade it out. So I will put it on time lapse and just watch as I use those techniques all over and the mountain will soften and it will look so much better and then also continue the abstract process where you finish off all the drawn areas and it should look pretty good when you're all done. As you can see, we started to add purple in this area, so you have the blues and the yellows up in here, and then we changed from that to the pinks and the purples. And we're going to continue doing that pink and purple pattern this direction to the left. And we'll also have the deep navy dark blues. And then over here, kind of the same thing. This will be the lightest and brightest area, and so We'll just continue this pattern and this pattern this way and that way. So keep following along with me and just remember that all the colors that we mixed are in this mountain. Continue doing all the texture and you'll be on the right track. I wish I could show you every little tiny step but this video would be days long. So hopefully that gives you enough that you can build from that.
down here we will be doing the perspective. So all of our lines will go back to that one specific spot that we marked earlier in this lesson. And so I'll just show you how to lay down the color and to do those final details. And then we will be close to being finished. Earlier we mixed colors that would be used for the background and the foreground. So kind of everything. And notice how I mixed this yellow ochre color. You can use yellow ochre or you can, to create that, you can do the flesh tone, you can do the burnt umber, and you can add some yellow, some cadmium yellow, and then white. But I would just recommend getting yellow ochre itself. And then you will also need this straw color. And then I mix the two of those together to get this one. And as you can see, there's also one that has orange. So we mixed some of these earlier, but we will apply them in that foreground as well. So kind of watch how I incorporate those as we go along, but I just wanted to refresh your memory so that you didn't have a hard time understanding why I was using certain colors and which colors those were. Make sure that you have liquid on your palette as well, because you'll be using that a lot as we begin this process. And basically what I'm going to have you do is we are going to take that straw color that we talked about as well as that yellow ochre color and we are going to come in and apply that right underneath here. We want that to be right in this area. Just have it fade out right along here. So basically after you've applied that yellow ochre color and the straw color, you're going to blend the top and the bottom. So this is far away. It represents the weeds that are in the background, but where it's far away, you are not going to see a lot of the details. So make sure that you don't get carried away and you start adding all of that because it's not going to make any sense. It will just make this look like it's much closer than it is and it won't look really good. And so you're just going to take a few lines of that color and we're going to apply it back in the background and you can kind of scatter it because again, those are just patches of weeds that are back in these fields. And if we just sort of scatter that color, it's going to look more natural. And it also kind of breaks up the blue that we have everywhere. You can also do some underneath here. That's going to be a patch of trees. And so it's good to have that color just right underneath. You can even bring that color all the way down right here if you want, and we'll have the trees going over that. Just make sure you have liquid on your brush. As you stroke, it will really help to make your paint slippery. And you can also do straight burnt umber. And if you take the red and the orange, so cadmium orange and terra rosa or liz and crimson or any sort of red, you can darken that yellow ochre color and get some shadows. And so I typically like to add just a little bit of shadow underneath that color. If it's too red, just add more burnt umber. It's really quite easy. But it's good to also underneath your trees just to establish some sort of shadow. So anywhere that you have those patches of trees, just add that. We've got some over here. And the other thing, when you do have trees, you want to still make it look as though it fits in with the background. You don't want all of this to completely change colors from what we did up here because it will ruin this scene. And so we need to keep some of our colors that we originally worked with. And so I want you to take one of your blues, so your grayish blue, and you're going to mix that into that burnt umber and the red. 
it just softens everything. It just makes it look much more muted. And I'll show you a neat trick to start some trees also right here. So the goal is to not see any canvas texture. And so just work until you don't see any of that. Okay, you can also take that blue, that bluish gray and blend over in here too. And see how that just tones things down so it's not quite so bright. That's very important that you do that. Okay, this is kind of a base color and then we go back over and just add some color over that. See how that toned down quite a bit. And then there are some areas where it has that really pretty blue also still back in there. Make sure that you apply some patches with that blue just to tie it into the mountains and to show that there's snow in the valley as well as on the mountains. And so we'll just add a hint of that here and there. Even where these trees are going to be, you want to have that blue creeping up in some of these areas. Okay, now to show you how to do the trees, um, I would actually really quick recommend just do a little tiny bit of blue back here too before we start. And take your brush and I want you to take that dark burnt umber shade that we that I talked about mixing and just start out by doing some abstract lines. Okay. And I want you to go back and forth between that and some of your gray blue. So you want the two colors in there and see how nice they work together. Okay, so you want to get that built up back here before we start doing branches and tree trunks. I'm using a fine tip brush. This is the number two AIT art brush and sable shader. And there we've established a really good base. Okay, from here, we will go up, and these are kind of weed-like trees. They aren't like super pretty. So you're just going to go up and do long branches that extend upward. And again, it's far away, so we don't need too much detail. We're just showing that they are there. So mainly what you want to focus on is the overall structure. So we'll kind of have a rounded shape. So it comes up, it's shorter on the sides, and it gets a little bit taller as it goes up toward the center. And if you focus on that, then it will look like trees far away. We're also going to do some pine trees far away, and that will help too, just to give more depth to your painting and to make it look more realistic. I've even added some purple in here Anytime that you can include colors that you've used in the background is really good. And you can take a fan brush and use that to blend things. And I feel like it just softens everything so that it doesn't look harsh. It looks more natural back in the background. Now also back in here we have those pine trees I was talking about and those are fun too. So dip your brush into black and then also that burnt umber and you are going to take those pine trees and come back here. You probably also want to use some deep blue. So you can mix black and blue together, you can use some reds, but you're basically going to go in and do a few trees and they'll be triangular at the top and then they 
they vary in size and shape, so just kind of watch how I do mine. And basically I'm just showing you different tricks for different areas. So these are ideas that we can apply. I'm not going to do the entire painting slow like this because again, it would just take so long to teach. So I'm just giving you some basic principles that you can run with. And then you can watch in time lapse as I apply it to the rest of my painting. And you can do the same if you're following along. You can create the same painting or do a version of this. It doesn't have to be the exact same. And then another thing too that I think is important is if you take your paintbrush and you might want to go just at the base of those weeds or trees, weedy trees, <laughs> you can just darken a little bit more. Just add some extra contrast in there. And I would even add more of that light blue. So take your paintbrush and just add some patches of that blue back in there. And see how that's starting to look more finished and more complete? So I want you to continue doing this type of landscaping. And as soon as this dries, so once we've done most of this, then we can begin to add some taller, light, wispy brown trees that are in my photo. But um, just continue going in and just anywhere that you need kind of a break between the blue and the gray, you can add pine trees, you can add more of that straw, you can add um, so many different things to break up that space. You can do patches of small trees, patches of weeds. But the world is your limit. I mean, you can just go on and on and on. But it is fun to teach you kind of the magic behind painting these landscapes. It's really neat when you can know those secrets and then grow from there. Here's how it looks zoomed out. And so when you see the picture as a whole, you can also determine whether or not you have too much yellow, you know, the yellow ochre. And if you feel like you have too much, just clean off your brush and add more blue. I'm gonna come back in here and just add a little more blue to tone things down. You can even have some areas that have a little bit of white, not a lot. That will help to accentuate the snow in certain areas, the reflection of the snow. I say this with every project, the more color, the better. So the more you layer colors, the better the overall painting will appear. Another thing you can do is you can take that blue and if you want to have a little more space separating the trees over in here, you can soften by adding some blue in between. And again, that makes it look a little more abstract, so really nice. I want you to take that bigger paintbrush that we used in the beginning, the 1.5 Master's Touch, 
And I want you to get that blue shade on there, the light blue, and make sure you mix some liquid. And you're going to come in here and just start applying that heavily in this area. You can even mix straight white in that. And I even want you to come down where these lines are. Basically, you're going to start to do a base color. And if you want to determine where the lines are that we drew, you're going to take a blue that's a little bit darker. And I would just kind of mark here and there with your paintbrush like this. Okay, this is going to make it look like an actual field. So I'm just taking my square flat brush, and this is the number 10, and kind of shaking it as I paint. And you get that bumpy look. Okay, this will make it look like an actual snowy field. And the nice thing is, if you kind of mark those lines, it will stay in perspective. And so just mark as you go. And really it gets easier here on out. You don't have a ton of detail like we did before. I mean, up in here we'll still have quite a bit, but down here it just gets fun and easy. The only thing I would suggest, I'm starting to run out of color. And so one helpful thing would be if you went in and remixed some of your colors that might be drying out, and then go back in and you can apply more as you go. Notice how I'm taking that beautiful cobalt teal shade and I'm incorporating that in the field. It's a really pretty color. Then the other thing you'll do, and make sure you stay under this line for now, after you have applied some of the blues, you can actually take the brown, the dark brown, and you can go in and just mark some areas that have dirt. So you just take that brush and go in just add a few dirt clods here and there. See how important that texture is to have that in your field. And don't be afraid of adding big clumps of texture. Like you can take a whole bunch of paint and apply it and it will stick up from the surface of the canvas and leave it because it will look very natural and kind of like the real thing. And as you're working, you can kind of go back and if you see areas that you still want to brighten up, do it. I like to step back from my painting and just kind of study it for a minute and take a good look from far away. And that's when I can see some of the things that might be lacking that I need to improve. So I'm going to go back in here and just add a little more blue. So I'm going to put some of this on time lapse and watch as I work. And I'm also going to mix up a variety of colors like I did before. I feel like things are starting to dry out. After you've done that big span of mountain range, your colors will start to deplete. So I'm going to get a fresh batch of colors, the same ones that we mixed, and then I'll be applying and building more back in here. But basically you're going to apply all of the blues and the pinks and everything and I'll show you how to do that as I work. Watch how I can enhance this area using 
my fresh paint that I just mixed up. And they're all the same colors that we mixed up before, but I just feel like when you get that paint rejuvenated, your color is so much better. Because after a while on your palette, your paints start to mix into each other. You see how rich that is? And then back in the background, I wanted to add a few more shadows, like cool shadows, not dark. Like, just wanted some beautiful blue shadows back in here, just to help it to match the mountain range a little bit better. So see how by mixing that fresh paint, I was able to rejuvenate that area. Okay, and then you can also take that blue and along with that brown, just take some blue and go in and highlight with your blues. Do you guys see the difference? See what adding more color does. So rather than having that ochre color be the main attraction, we toned it down by simply applying blue over and around it like this. So it's still there and it's still subtle and it still contrasts beautifully against that mountain, but now it looks even prettier because you have all this blue that it's contrasting against. Notice how I'm taking my brush and I'm just doing that texture above. Okay, that will help too. It blends it into the background like that. You can even come back here and do some of those lines, do some texture for the lines back in this area in the field. So we're just color building everywhere we go. Okay, that's the key term, color building. And it matches the mountain much better now. So I'm gonna put this on time lapse. I'm gonna work over this area now and just watch how I continue to maintain that color building and follow along. To explain something so down here you will have a dark line and it's a dark blue line and from that line so after you paint it you can make some tall weeds like this and so as I have it on time-lapse just notice that technique that I'm using and when you get done doing that you can go back in and add uh, some darker shades so that's when you would take the dark gray and then also some browns and you'll just go in and enhance those some more so that was just a little trick that I didn't want to skip over because it's important that you know how to do it but for the browns just take not a lot, but just a few strokes in there and add that burnt umber combination. I wouldn't get too yellow. You can add a tiny bit of yellow in here, 
but I would mainly stick with the deep navy blue, dark gray, and then some burnt umbers. Down here you're going to do just one solid line. You won't have the perspective lines, so keep that in mind. And then also as you move along, remember to add your stones and your dirt clods. So just go in there with your browns and work in that area doing that. I'm going to take a line straight across here. Okay, and that breaks up where that field is back in the distance. Make sure your line is relatively straight. Maybe it can have a few variations in it. And then you want another one down here. So just do the same thing, get your brush, dip it in those same colors. And you'll establish another line across here. And my brush is painting double, but that's okay, that's easy to fix. But what that does is it just helps us to see the separation between the fields and then we can establish where to paint what. So just take your brush along here and smooth out the line. And you can have it connect with that patch of trees and weeds. And back in this corner, I want to have this line fade, so you'll just bring that and kind of make it disappear. And then we want to do some of that straw color. Again, don't get carried away, but just add some of that rich color in here. And you'll have that fade into the white over here. So you can taper back. You can kind of have it go in this direction. So at this point, we're just establishing color so that we can see where each field is and where to separate. And I like to start out of abstract. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to try and be super detailed right off the bat. You could tell with my mountains that I worked in that style where I got my darks and my lights established and then I would go back over and do detail and that's crucial in your painting because if you fail to do that then you, you're more likely to have to start over in certain areas. Okay, so once you've done that, you can take your paintbrush and dip it in the lighter blues and white and liquid and just take your brush and start to paint that other field in right here. We're just trying to get as much paint on this canvas as possible in this phase. 
so that we can begin to see the format, the whole composition, and then we can go back in and detail, like I said. I did do a little more detail over in here just because I wanted to establish where those trees are. And then as soon as it dries, I want to darken them a little bit more. It's hard to get too dark when you're working on wet paint. And so I just did a base color and then we'll go back over and make that look much better when it dries. And another thing you can do to take that line and continue it across, and then have it fade. So make sure that corner is really nice and dark. And again, we can darken more as the paint dries. The whole reason that we're laying down this paint right now in abstract form is so that as it dries, we can get even more detail. Came back in here, there's more shrubbery. And so let's do an abstract version of that. So you'll just do a rounded half circle basically right in here. And right now it will look like a big blob. We'll let it dry and then we'll go back over it and add more color and texture. Underneath that, we're going to add light blue. And paintings, a lot of times, will go through an ugly phase. With the mountains, we didn't have to worry too much about that. But with the valley where you're working with a lot of different textures and all these different fields and trees and all these things, you kind of have to establish some base color and then go back in and finish what you started. And so you do kind of go through an ugly abstract phase. It's not my favorite period, but it's necessary to get the color that we want and the texture that we want in the future. So. Just be patient and tomorrow when this paint is dry, we can make it look awesome. If you want, you can add a little more shape in there. Like if you want to kind of contour that area, you could do that. But it's kind of a ghost of a tree or a mass, a ghost of a mass of trees. Can you see that? And then you have that beautiful base color that you can paint over. And see how the whole entire painting is starting to have more depth? That's because we are establishing all these different areas. Even back here tomorrow, we can add some texture for weeds sticking up in between the fields. But right now it's just going to be a base color. You guys see how it's coming about? How everything is starting to make sense? It's crazy how this started out as just a flat canvas. And now it's this big valley with mountains. So see how I'm just establishing all of these dark shadows and areas. It's all abstract. And I would say back in here, you can add a few of those, like do another row right here. Really in the photo, there's houses all along here, but I thought, you know, let's just make it look all country. So in the areas that are left, all the white areas, just take your paintbrush and go in and add that blue snow. And you can mix different colors, like just go in and do all different shades.
You can even do more areas with the straw. So if you want to take that sienna brown color or yellow ochre color, sorry, and just add some rows of that back in there. And now you can easily see what we're trying to accomplish here. Over here, I was basically showing you what you can accomplish later in the process. Um, I do prefer to start out this way, but at least you can see some of the textures and some of the different things we'll be adding as this dries. But even over here, I'm going to add more detail as it dries. So yesterday I painted this dark area here and that's just the abstract version of the trees that we will be doing. And to show you how to define those trees and make them stand out better, um, you are going to take your light blue and get some liquid on it and take your fine tip brush and I want you to just go in and highlight some areas within that dark spot that we painted and that will just help to break it up so that it's not a big dark mass. And then once you have done that, and I haven't done all of it yet, but I'll put it on time lapse as I do, I want you to take your dark paint, so burnt umber is preferable. You can also do some of the yellow ochre mixture so you can go back and forth between the two. I do prefer the burnt umber and red combination. And you will take your paintbrush, the fine tip one, and you're just going to branch out of that mass. And if you have too much red, that's okay. Just dip it back into the burnt umber to tone it down. And you're just doing branches coming up out of that area so that it looks more defined and you have more detail. And you want it to fade at the top and so you don't want to press hard as you go up. You want it to just get lighter and lighter and disappear. And you can have the branches kind of intertwine into each other. But see how much better that looks than just having that big blob? So we start out that way, we paint abstractly, and then we go back over and detail. And it doesn't hurt to do ghost-like branches behind. And so feel free to do that so you can have both. So what I do is I just wait for my paint to kind of run out. And so I'll do several branches with the dark color. And then all of a sudden, my paint runs out on my brush. But rather than putting more paint on, I just make ghost branches. And you can even do that down in here. So you can take some of that color and go in and detail in that area. And don't get carried away. You know, just add a few abstract shapes down below. Okay, and see how nice that looks compared to just this big ball of darkness? So I'm gonna put it on time lapse as I finish that area. And you can follow along and do the same thing. And then we'll go on to another area. That turned out when we softened everything. 
And so also keep in mind that the grass underneath, it's good to take your brush and just brush upward into this shrubbery and also down below just soften down there because the softening is what's going to make it look more realistic. If you keep these edges really sharp and rigid, they won't have a very realistic feel. And so now that we have this base color, what I want to do over there is take your paintbrush, and I just got my flat brush here, the square brush, and I want you to take white and the light blue, so you'll go back and forth between those two, and we're gonna go in and add layers of snow in this field over that brownish yellow ochre color. Okay, and so we're just essentially adding texture and more layers of color in this field. And so just take that brush and apply until you think it looks decent. And then also use some of the blue for shadows. And so like right in here, we can start to add some light blue. And anywhere that there's a bump in the snow, that's where you'll add some shadows beneath. And look how we still have that color underneath. So as you're stroking along, just make sure that you get rid of the canvas texture by blending in your strokes. Okay, and then watch how lightening this area can really help to enhance the look of the painting. Another way to get rid of the canvas texture is to add more liquid to your paint. You can even come up here to that dark line and you can do little bumps in the snow. Doing the X pattern can make a really nice texture as well and it helps to blend. We just don't want that yellow to overpower this area, so we're going to lighten that up a little bit, and then I'm going to show you how to do the grasses along that borderline for the field. So in that area, you'll do the exact same thing that we have been doing, and you're going to take that burnt umber, combination with the red and that can be a lizard and crimson, it can be burnt sienna, any of those. And we're going to go in and start to add the grass. Okay, and don't just stick with those colors but also do the grays. So you want the grays and the burnt umbers. You can even add some purple. And again, like be darker on the bottom with your strokes and then go up and it will fade as you go up. The paint from yesterday is still pretty wet. So you'll get a natural fade from that. And then to tone down the yellow in this corner, just take this brown and lift it upward. Make sure you have some liquid on your brush. And be sure to stroke in different directions. You don't want to go one direction. You can work quickly for a more natural look. And see how that's neutralizing that area so that it's just not too powerful in color. That's the goal. So I just like to work until it looks satisfying. You know, when you look at it and you don't think, oh, I need to change it. 
when you can look at your painting and say, yeah, it looks good. Um, that's, that's when you can be satisfied with yourself. But if you step back and you think, you know, I need to do something different in that area, then do it. You gotta listen to your gut as an artist. And sometimes it's good to bring other people into the room to look at your painting, that helps too. Yeah, I love what softening the painting does. When you soften the landscape, you just make it look really nice and subtle. It just looks so pretty. So I'm taking this fan brush and just gently blending the area. I'm not pushing down hard because that will ruin it. And you can still build your color if you feel like you covered too much of that yellow. Just take some more yellow and go in between and add yellow for texture. I love going up to a painting and seeing a lot of color and a lot of texture. So don't be shy and get some of that in there. So basically you're going to work across this area and you want to soften all of these lines. So just continue working. I'll put mine on time lapse. You can work in here. You can work along here. I think that this looks pretty good, especially if we get some grass along here. And then we will be working in this area a little more too, just to enhance that. And then we can start to move to the right. To take note of a few things that I did. I added more pine trees back in here and that's really easy to do. You just take your fine tip brush and add black and you can see how they stand out really well against that misty blue back there. And then I also, if you take note, look at the blue down below these weeds. It's good to have a shadow underneath those and so I just took a medium blue, went right underneath like that. And even in that area, notice how it takes out some of that dull gray and it just adds beautiful coloring in there. That's how you take a painting from okay to amazing. It's all about that color. I also took some blue, um, the same medium blue, and I added a little bit in the weeds. And then another thing I did, if you notice, we have some highlights from the sunset on the mountain so why not have highlights in some of the weeds and so I took that same yellow that we mixed before and I just frosted the tips of some of these weeds with that color so that it looked like they were being hit by the sunlight so just keep those things in mind and I'm going to keep working I want to finish this field right along here and then I want to continue doing the same process that I did over here in this entire area. So I think from this point on, I am just going to plan on having it on time lapse. And also don't forget down here, um, do your weeds and then add that blue, that medium blue. And then you can take some white and kind of add some drifts and some mounds in the snow. And in this field, if you wanted to, you could go through and add you know, just a few little, I don't know, marks in the snow to look like some dirt clods or just texture, whatever you want to do. But all these little things really do make a difference in a big, beautiful landscape. And so just keep that in mind as you're working. Um, again, in these gray areas, by adding some blue, that rich medium blue, it just 
really brings it to life. So do that wherever you can. And that's probably one of the most key items. The other thing here is, look how I added some purple down under the trees. That helps them blend into the mountain itself. So if you wanted to, you could even take some purple and apply a little bit in your weeds as well. I did it over here in this area. And also on these trees, I highlighted with light blue just to make them stand out more. So it's coming together and it's looking more realistic. Like I said before, it kind of went through an ugly phase and that's normal. And it's funny because I'm not satisfied <laughs> until I go through and I, I get this phase done because I, it actually puts me in a bad mood. I get in a bad mood when my painting isn't looking great at the moment. <laughs> And there's no reason to really, because you know that it will look good in the end. So anyway, um, have fun. And I'm gonna put the rest on time-lapse and just watch closely and you can follow along with your own painting.
And we are done. I am very, very pleased with the final result. If you enjoyed this project, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more stunning projects to come. We'll see you next time.